An old function in Linux called memchar has been improved recently with the latest patch of Linux by four times. But this is not really the most instructive thing because this function was introduced back in what, 1991? Uh, but the most in instructive thing here is how it was discovered and the way uh, the, the code is written back in the days versus taking advantage of modern systems and cpus and this is what uh, what is fascinating to me this comes from foronix i'm going to read it to you and then a little bit i'm going to discuss a little bit so optimized memchar implementations for linux kernel up to four times faster a set of proposed patches promise, promises to make the linux kernels memchar which is a function basically you guys that you give it a block of memory, the start of the block of the memory, you give it what character you want to find, and it will give you where exactly in that memory that character exists. So it's almost like a search, you know, contains, if you will. In tests carried out by the developer, the new implementation can be nearly four times faster in large searches. Only in large searches. So it's not really a big deal if you're searching small binaries, small strings, but if we're large, when you're searching large things, yeah, it can be beneficial. But this is not really what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the explanation here and how we can learn something from this, from experts. So this comes from uh, one of the developers of Linux kernel, Eugene Chang, who sent out the patches. Let's read this and discuss a little bit. The original version of memchar is implemented with a bytewise comparing technique, which does not fully use the 64 or 32 bit registers in the CPU. We, that means them, we use word wide comparing so that eight characters, so eight bytes, assuming uh, one byte is one character, that might not always be true for UTF-8, but you get the point, can be compared at the same time on the CPU. This code is based on David Late's implementation. So this is, and they, they go on and explain the after, uh, actual performance, because you, you see, if you compare a single byte, that means you have to take it from memory, copy to the CPU register, and then compare it with the actual value that you want to look for. So if you're comparing byte by byte, you're going to go back and forth from memory to the CPU. What they, those guys did, it's like, okay, since we have uh, plenty of room in the CPU register, which is the closest cache to the CPU, let's copy eight. Let's copy the whole 64 bit. Let's understand how much the register is using and then maybe change that. They don't mention if, if the CPU's register is 32, they shift to a four word or four bytes or four characters. I don't know. But it's still comparing eight together. You know, it's much faster close to the CPU comparing to one byte by one. And uh, this is the, basically the, the actual function. This is the code. Right? And as you can see, it was written back in 1992 by Linus Travor. And uh, the, the, the code is really simple. You can read through it, through it and really understand what's going on. You know, it, it's, this is the trick here. The P here is the, basically the storage where you're looping through each byte, right? So it's an unsigned character and you're looping through all the N size. That's the memory size, right? And this is what you're looking for. If you found it, then exit, right? And this return the result. Otherwise, return null. That means you didn't find you didn't find it. So we're searching byte by byte. What those guys did is they changed this to a word, which is I believe it's a it's an eight eight byte. So this is what fascinates me. When I read this article, I was like, oh, is it worth it to make a video on it for the benefits? We might not get anything out of it. As a as you, as a user, we might not feel it at all. Maybe if you use this function, if it's exposed to you in the string.c, which is the, the C library that this is exposed to, yeah, you might use it if you're using really large string. Then you're going to start feeling it because you're going to start reading more and more. And you're going to utilize the cache of the CPU registers, right? But it doesn't really matter. What this, I think, teaches us is how to look beyond the abstractions you know because if i'm look if i'm writing a code and it's looping through a character 
we don't really think in terms of software architecture and hardware architecture. We really, at least I don't personally, you know, but this kind of changes the game. I believe those C, uh, the kernel guys think of this in this time all the time, right? But I personally don't, you know, because I, I mostly write in high level languages. So I rarely think like this. But this kind of this kind of news changes completely how I think, you know, and I think we can learn something of them that look at the code you're writing today and see, can it really improve? I believe every code can be improved, but the goal here is we don't want to also go and improve everything, right? Because it's like, okay, how much the gains are really worth it or not? You have to think about it this way. But just the fact that understanding what's going on gives you internal, I don't know, comfort of some sort, at least to me, that, okay, this is exactly how the code works. And instead of just, I don't know, it's just looping, but what is it actually doing? This trip between the memory and the CPU, and it's less uh, significant, this trip between the CPU and memory, when in your in a NOMA architecture where the cpu or 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 the, the 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 new architecture with m1 or m2 the apple one where the cpu literally lives within the memory so there is no trip to go to a bus of some sort to read the memory there is no trip so this i believe will be le even less significant right in in this kind of architecture where the things are so close to each other but i i found it just fascinating to as as you go through the code and understand what is exactly doing, and by all means, I, I'm not really an expert. It just makes me really think about this uh, in details. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do Do you feel the same, or do you say, "Ah, this is really it's just really nothing burger"? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Quick news today.